It's been 10 years since the killing of Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden in a U.S. Special Forces raid in Pakistan. And now his successor, Ayman al-Zawahiri, has been killed in a U.S. drone strike in Kabul, Afghanistan. Where does this leave Al-Qaeda and what is the future of this organization? This is the latest. <music> The terrorist organization that bin Laden left behind for uh, Ayman al-Zawahiri was uh, a weakening organization. It was under a lot of pressure due to internal political problems. It was also struggling from the pressure of uh, American drone strikes. And initially, Zawahiri struggled uh, as well. Uh, the pressure from U.S. drone strikes continued against the organization. Uh, and some of the critical affiliates of this organization, he struggled to control them, rein them in. Uh, and uh, the, the lowest point for Al-Qaeda was the defection of its affiliate in Iraq, which went on to become uh, ISIS, a vicious competitor that tried to poach from Al-Qaeda in different parts of the world. But after that, it appears that Zawahiri was able to stabilize his global terrorist uh, network. In fact, in many places, he was able to consolidate and expand, in particular uh, in Africa. And perhaps his most significant achievement as a terrorist mastermind was that he was able to preserve the group's historic strategic relationship with the Taliban uh, and, and, and shield it up to the point of his death, which is signified by the fact that he was killed in Kabul, uh, Afghanistan. He also continued to pose a major threat to the United States, its interests, as well as regional security in different parts of the world. The big question or challenge facing Al-Qaeda is who will succeed Ayman as the Wahiri? And from what we know uh, about Al-Qaeda, it has a line of succession. And there are two people in particular who are uh, seen by experts as well as policymakers as potential candidates most likely to su succeed Ayman as a Wahiri. One of them is Saif al Adil. Uh, he is an old Al-Qaeda operative, used to be with bin Laden in Afghanistan, and post 9-11 has spent a lot of time in Iran. So he's said to be in contention. Uh, and then another person by the name of Abdurrahman al-Maghribi, who was related uh, to Ayman as a Wahiri, uh, he's said to also be in the running for, for Al-Qaeda's top job. You know, irrespective of who succeeds Ayman as Zawahiri, the next leader will face first and foremost the challenge of uh, establishing uh, control over this global terrorist network which exists in different parts of the world from Somalia to West Africa uh, to the Middle East and then parts of uh, South Asia. Um, and it's an open question if uh, the new leader can, uh, can fully take control uh, of this, um, this rather complicated organization. There are two views emerging from this strike against Ayman al Zawahiri in Kabul, Afghanistan. Uh, one view is that the United States government has a powerful capability uh, which it can use to find, locate uh, high value terrorist leaders, target like Ayman al Zawahiri in denied places where it doesn't have a diplomatic mission or a proximate. Uh, uh, military base such as uh, Afghanistan. So that's good news. It means that the United States government can respond to threats as they begin to metastasize uh, in, in difficult to access places. On the other hand, another reality that has emerged is that the Taliban remain very committed to uh, Al-Qaeda. They still want to support this group and organization, provide it with a sanctuary uh, and uh, perhaps a safe haven in, in Afghanistan. And so that is a troubling development. And any future U.S. counterterrorism policy has to take into account the fact that dangerous terror groups like Al-Qaeda can have a uh, safe haven in Afghanistan from where they might be able to threaten U.S. interests both in the region and beyond. <laughs>